Hello, Cornerstone Kids. I am so glad you are here with us at Cornerstone Kids Online. We have some great things planned. You will learn this month's theme and memory verse, sing a great worship song, and watch this week's true Bible story. At the end, you will have a chance to pray together as a family. But before we get started, let's review our Cornerstone Kids values. Number one, love God. We are created to pursue an authentic relationship with our Creator. Number two, love people. We exist every day to demonstrate God's love to a broken world. And number three, love life. We experience life to the fullest as we walk in our God-given identity. If you do each of these things each day, you can change not only your life, but the lives of others. Have a great week. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about knowledge. While we take a look at the story of someone who faced a really tall temptation. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. I recently discovered some new stuff. Like what? Well, I made a quiz for you. It's gonna be out of this world. Is that a clue? We're going to find out how much you know about stars. Wait, like stars or stars? I mean flaming ball of hydrogen and helium kind. Is there a prize? One chocolate bar for every right answer. Full size? You bet. To be delivered through the prize tube extraordinaire. I'm in. It's time to play... The Out of This World Quiz Show. 
Here's your first question. What type of galaxy is the Milky Way? A, elliptical, B, spiral, C, lenticular, D, medical. Oh, oh, I know this one. It's um, A. No, I mean B, B, spiral. Final answer? Final answer. Let's see if you're right. Yes! Spiral is correct. You get one Milky Way pod. Yum. Uh-uh-uh. Hey, I won that. Maybe. You must wait for the final test. Um, okay. Question two. What is the nearest star to our solar system? A, Proxima Centauri, B, Sirius, C, Sonic the Hedgehog, or D, Beetlejuice? Nearest star, oof, um. A, Proxima Centauri? Final answer? No, D, Beetlejuice. Let's check that out. Oh, no, I'm sorry, but the correct answer was A. Ugh, I knew it. You have one more chance. Question three, what is the Kuiper Belt? A, the remains of an exploding supernova? B, an icy collection of objects beyond Neptune's orbit? C, the hottest fashion item? Or D, the tail of an asteroid? The answer is, um, I think it's B. B, an icy collection of objects beyond Neptune's orbit? All right, let's see if it's correct. Yes! You win an extra dark chocolate bar. Can I open it now? You can open it now. Or you can trade your two candy bars for what's inside this box. What is inside that box? It will only be revealed once you choose. You have 20 seconds. Well, is it better than two chocolate bars? My lips are sealed. So it could be a ball of dry Ireland. Or it could be something really awesome. I'm really craving chocolate. You right have now. five seconds. Oh, what if there's a hundred dollar bill two in the box? Two seconds. Uh, okay, I'm giving the chocolate. Congratulations, you have won two chocolate bars. Now I get to see what's in the box, right? It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to bless the whole world through one group of people, the Israelites. Over hundreds of years, God spoke through prophets about the great rescuer God would send. And at last, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he was baptized in the Jordan River. God spoke from heaven, this is my son, and I love him. I'm very pleased with him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, Erica. Hey, everyone. So Jesus was about 30 years old at this time. After years of studying God's words and quietly working as a carpenter, now, Jesus was revealed to the watching crowds as God's son. It must have seemed like the perfect time for him to start teaching and doing miracles and gathering followers, but that isn't what happened. Instead, God's spirit led Jesus away from the crowds and towns and into the desert. For 40 long days, Jesus spent time with God, preparing for what God would have him do next. During this time, Jesus ate nothing. He focused on God as the one thing he needed above all else, but he wasn't alone. Not quite, because the devil showed up to distract him. You must be so hungry. Surely God wouldn't mind if you had just a little snack. Jesus was God's son, but he was also fully human too. And as the 40 days passed, he became desperately hungry. The devil refused to leave Jesus alone, needling and tempting him at every opportunity. At the end of the 40 days, he offered Jesus a large, smooth stone. If you really are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. It must have been so easy for Jesus to imagine that rock as a crusty, warm loaf. As God's son, he had the power to change the stone to bread in an instant. He could have torn off large, chewy pieces to satisfy his deep hunger right away, but 
Jesus knew every word that God had spoken, and he was ready with an answer. It is written, man must not live only on bread. If that's the way you want it. But the devil didn't give up. He led Jesus up to a high place where the whole world appeared to spread out beneath them. Every powerful kingdom, every palace, every throne and ruler on earth. The devil smiled, smooth and seemingly in control. I will give you all their authority and glory. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus knew that one day he would rule all the nations of the world. He had come as God's rescuer, but to take this easy way the devil offered would destroy God's plan. Once again, Jesus spoke God's words. It is written, Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. The devil was seething. He couldn't tempt Jesus into taking the easy road, but he had one final shot to try. The devil led Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. They stood on the very highest point of the temple itself. The worshipers below seemed small as ants. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. The devil wanted to trap Jesus, to make him panic. Does God really love you? Prove it. But again, Jesus had God's own words at the ready. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. The devil was furious. He couldn't trip Jesus up no matter what he tried. So at last, he left until he could find a better chance. When the devil was gone, God had sent angels to take care of Jesus and provide everything he needed. Jesus had spent his whole life discovering God's words and spending time with God. And so when he had to make some tough choices, the words were right there. 40 whole days with no food? I can't even imagine that. Yeah, I sure do not make good choices when I'm hungry. And it's not just when you're hungry. Difficult choices can show up at any time. And remembering what's true can help you make the wise choice. So what's our part in the story? Well, before you remember what's true, you have to discover what's true. You can start by reading God's words in scripture. And memorizing it too. And you can spend time talking with people who've been following God a while. Here are some super important truths to start with. God made you and loves you. You are so valuable that Jesus gave up his life so that you could have a relationship with God forever. God always hears you when you pray and is acting to provide what you need, even if it's not in the way you expect. And you can know the most important thing is to love God and love others. Exactly. The more those truths are rooted in your heart, the easier it is to face tough choices. Maybe you're at a friend's house and they're trying to get you to watch a show your parents specifically said you can't watch. You can remember that you are already deeply loved by God, so you don't have to do something wrong just to be liked. Or when your little sister is bugging you and you're about to snap, you can stop and remember loving others is more important. Exactly. I think y'all got it. See you next time. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Erica. So here's the thing. Remembering what's true can help you make the wise choice. Now do I get to see what's inside the box? Sure. <laughs> no! Get that away from me! It could be covered in chocolate. No! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our last two contestants in this year's World Spelling Bee. They will each be given a word. If one contestant misspells their word and the other contestant spells their word correctly, the one who spelled their word correctly will be the champion. We will start with Brandon. <coughs> Brandon, your word is no. Oh! 
Whoa, you are going down, man. There is no way you get this one. Can you please use it in a sentence? A man was asked if Stephen will win the spelling bee. The answer was no. Whatever. You're gonna lose. Are there definitions for the word? A word meaning the opposite of yes, often given as a response to any question Stephen asks. Is there an alternate pronunciation of the word? No. <laughs> I got this in the bag, man. You're gonna lose. No. 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 N. O. No. That is correct. <sighs> yes. Nicely done. Stephen. Yes. Your word is sesquipedalophobia. What? It's so easy. What? M may I have Brandon's word, please? No. No like no or no like Yes, I can have that word. No. So it's the sesqu one then. Sesqua. Pedala. Phobia. S E S Q U A P E D A L O P H O B I A. Sesqua pedalophobia. No. <laughs> back, I realized it wasn't a bear at all. What was it? It was my Aunt Mildred coughing. What? Yeah. Oh, hey everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm Steven, and you're watching The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. Steven, how would you describe The So-and-So Show? Oh, uh, fun, mm -hmm. adventurous, odd. Odd? Yeah, well, sometimes. Hmm. Well, I often like to describe The So-and-So Show as educational. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. Really? Yes, really. As much fun as we have on the show, I also believe we offer our viewers a chance to learn new things and absorb a deep intellectual understanding of the power that comes with a hunger for educational pursuits, proving that knowledge can help unlock any door and empower the next generation to reflect the character of God to a world that desperately needs it. Really? Yes! I know, I'm just playing with you. I completely agree with you. Gaining knowledge can help you make wise choices and accomplish so many other important things in life. Thank you. Yeah, like help you win a goofy prize in a new game show I'm calling... Math Quiz! Math Quiz? Yes! The game sweeping classrooms across the globe. We're gonna take a math quiz. Brandon, I know math is one of those subjects that many people dislike. Me being one of those people. But it can be really helpful in life. You use it all the time when you're building things, cooking, flying, even drawing. It's true. So I thought it would be really fun for us to test out our mathematical abilities with a little math quiz. Here you go. Here's a pencil. Always use a pencil when doing math, kids. That way you can go ahead and erase if you make a mistake and try again. Good tip. All right, get ready and go. Hey, Steven. Uh, shh. Are we really just gonna do math? Yes, it's important. You don't think it would be boring? Boring? This is the game show. Math quiz. Very exciting. Okay. Put your name on the top there. Okay. Uh, Steven. Shh. Can't talk during quizzes, Brandon. <laughs> I can't talk, then. Brandon. Brandon. Oh. Over here. Ah, ah, no outbursts during quizzes. <sighs> Shh. Who are you? 
I'm here to remind you of the right thing to do. Oh, like an angel? Let's not get carried away. Okay. It looks like okay. Stephen accidentally gave you the math quiz with all the answers on it. You're not thinking about cheating, are you? I mean... Hey! Uh... Shh! Keep it down! You don't want Stephen to get wise, right? Quick! Act like you're doing math. You'll never know you already got the answers. I don't know. Yes, you do. Hey, stay out of this goody two-shoes. That's not very nice. Hey, Brandon, look at Steven. All smug, knowing all his maths and stuff. You should beat him just to put him in his place. Yeah. Who cares if you have to cheat a little? You know why you shouldn't do that, Brandon. I do? You do. You know better. You know that cheating is lying, and that lying is not good. He has a point. <sighs> no, he doesn't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Don't. Do. Don't. Times a hundred. Do. Times infinity. Ah! Okay. Why am I so bad at Guys, math? thank you. I think I can handle it from here. <laughs> I knew he would listen to me. We'll see. Steven. I'm sorry, can you please stop mathing for a second? I have something to say. Hey, are you okay? Yes, I, uh... Think you accidentally gave me the answer key. What? Yeah, you gave me the quiz that already has all the answers on it. Wow! Brandon? That was... <laughs> well, that was really, really, really kind of you. <laughs> because, well, you know how much I... I love math. I love, I love math. And you totally could have cheated, but you did it. And that was just, what? <laughs> that means so much to me. It's okay, man. You don't, it's, okay. I kind of wish I cheated now. You don't mean that. You're a no, good man. I don't mean that. I was just joking. Okay. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, fellas, what's up? Nothing much. You okay, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Brandon didn't cheat on math. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Hey, you got a story for us today? Hey, you know it. And we're going to tell it with Shadow Puppet Theater. Awesome. Take it away, my friend. You're my friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> no more hugs. No more hugs. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. So today we're going to talk about an amazing moment in the life of Jesus. Jesus was about 30 years old, and it had just been revealed to a crowd of people that he was the son of God, the Messiah who was sent to rescue the world. But instead of going on this whirlwind, crazy promotional tour around the globe, God's spirit led Jesus into the desert by himself. When Jesus went out to this desert, he prayed and spent a lot of time with God. And he did this for 40 days. Yeah, not four, four, zero, 40 days. And what's more amazing is Jesus fasted the entire time. That means he did not eat anything for 40 days. But even though he was incredibly hungry, Jesus kept focusing on the one thing that meant more to him than all the food in the world his relationship with God, which is a good thing. Because even though he went out into the desert all alone, there was someone else who showed up. And this someone was not there to help Jesus. This someone was the devil. And at the end of Jesus' 40-day fast, the devil was there to tempt Jesus. Jesus. Oh, you look very, very hungry. Say, if you really are the Son of God, why don't you tell this stone to become bread? After 40 days, I can only imagine how tempting it would be to do this. I mean, Jesus was God's Son. He could do anything He wanted. 
But Jesus, remembering something that he had learned from Scripture, well, he said, It is written, Man must not live only on bread. He must also live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Whoa, that was impressive. Not only did Jesus resist the devil's temptations, but he did it using the knowledge of scripture and what it says about trusting God. Well, the devil wasn't done with Jesus. This time, he took Jesus to a high place, a place where Jesus could see all the kingdoms of the world. And as they looked down on all creation, the devil said, Jesus, look, I will give you all their authority and glory was given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. Worship me, and it'll all be yours. Once again, Jesus thought about what he knew was true. He said, It is written, Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. Jesus wasn't budging from what he knew was true and who he knew God was. But the devil tried one more time. And he took Jesus to the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. After all, it is written, the Lord shall command his angels to take care of you. They will lift you with their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. The devil is tricky, I'll give him that. But this time, this time, the devil used scripture himself to tempt Jesus. But ultimately, Jesus knew it was better to trust in God. Why? Well, it was something based off what he learned. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. The devil was beaten, and so he left Jesus alone. Jesus still tired and weary, was immediately tended to by angels from God who provided everything he needed. The end. So what'd you guys think? Whoa, that was incredible. Even when Jesus was tired and weak. And incredibly hungry. Totally, he used what he knew was true to keep from giving in to all those temptations. That's right. Jesus spent his whole life growing up around God's word and listening to teachers think about and talk about who God is. And all that knowledge came in handy when he needed it most. That's why it's so important for us to learn and read and, and think about all the things in the Bible. Yep. Hey, thanks for the story. Hey, anytime. Later. Wow. Kind of reminds me of our math quiz. That story reminded you of a math quiz? No. Oh. Just reminded me of your honesty oh. <laughs> and your friendship. A reflection about everything, you know, about God. <laughs> Please reveal the question. What helps you make the wise choice? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, what are things you can learn from that help you make the wisest choices? I know for one, it can be the past. Oh yeah, we can learn from our mistakes and the choices that other people have made in the past. Yeah, and like, remember the time that like, I don't know, you decided, <laughs> Not to cheat? All right, settle down. Okay. Any other ideas? I mean, you can always learn from stuff you read. Ah, another excellent example. What do you think? What helps you make wise choices? Until next time, I'm Steven, and this is my good friend, Brandon. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Bye. <laughs> Are you crying too? I think there's something about what you're doing. Really? Remember you're not mocking me? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Two. 256. <laughs> 45. Right, uh, that was lucky. Lucky guess. 84,000. <laughs> no. <laughs> <sighs> 160. <laughs> Point nine eight. eight. Ah. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Bananas. Mm.